Okay, today we're going to be making a slow cooker braised beef ragu uh, from a recipe book called Eat What You Love Restaurant Favorites. Eat What You Love Restaurant Favorites. So we're going to... We're gonna do that today. It looks really, really good. Let me sh show you the picture. It is called Eat What You Love Restaurant Favorites, and it is uh, classic and crave-worthy recipes, low in sugar, fat, and calories. And I'm trying to find, oh, there it is. And it's uh, by the New York Times bestselling Marlene Coke or Koch, which I don't know, or Koch, I don't know, K-O-C-H. Yeah, I got this off of QVC, but I'm sure you can get it on Amazon. As a matter of fact, I think Amazon does have it in an um, e-book, which I really love because then you can, you know, do your own thing. So I'm just going to kind of let you see. And there's the picture. So we'll see if our picture matches that one when we're done. And there it is. And, of course, we're going to be using a gadget, and I am the gadget queen. Today we're going to be using a Cuisinart slow cooker that also has a sauté. Uh, feature to it. So while my brother is preparing all of the stuff, you see that we're going to have carrots, we're going to have celery, we're going to have marinara sauce, mushrooms. I'm making beef broth as we speak. Um, we're going to have red wine in it. What am I forgetting? Oh, are we doing pasta? Uh, are we doing tomato paste as well? No, marinara sauce. Oh, just marinara oh, sauce. Oh, yes, tomato paste. And tomato paste. Okay. Yeah. All right, so this is our ingredients, and we'll be back with you in just a minute. He's chopping and dicing those carrots. We need a cup of them, so we'll be right with you. I think my broth water is boiling over there. Mm -hmm. See you in a minute. The beef broth smells good, though. Okay, now how much celery are we doing here? Are we doing one enough? cup. Okay, we're doing one cup of carrots, carrots one cup of and one cup of celery. Let me just read off the ingredients and, and everything. A packet of mushrooms. One eight ounce package of mushrooms. Did, what did we get? Did we, eight ounce. Okay, so we're gonna use all our mushrooms. And then we're gonna do one whole jar of 24 ounce or two and a half cups of the marinara sauce. So everything seems to be real easy to do here. So after he does the vegetables, then he's gonna pull the meat out and trim off the meat and everything. And then we're gonna use one teaspoon of olive oil in the uh, crock pot and do yep, it from there to brown the meat to brown the meat yeah so this oh one bay leaf i need to get a bay leaf out there's a bay leaf in there yep one bay leaf okay yep so you put it in there i didn't see the bay leaf it's right before the red pepper flakes okay but we have bay leaves it's not an issue so yes we have bay leaves in our flour <laughs> Because it keeps the bugs out. And apparently, that's what she. That's what her. It works. That's apparently. what her family in Kazakhstan did. Yeah. So that that maybe that works. Whatever it takes, right? Okay. So after we get all this diced and we start sauteing, we'll come right back. Hold on. Okay. The recipe called for a pound and a half, but we have two pounds. So, but by the time you are you gonna need to trim it in any way or anything, we might. I don't, ooh, think so. I don't know. It looks like it's pretty nice it's size. Pretty yeah. Yeah. God, that beef broth is smelling nice. I will say that. So, you're, he's just going to... Oh, my God, that looks delicious. That looks good. The marbling in it is awesome. It's not too much. So, Why am I not wearing my apron? I don't know. I don't have mine on either. But then again, I'm not really cooking yet. I'm just videoing. Are you going to bring me mine too? Which one do you want? I don't care. The blue stripe is the one I usually put on. Have you lost your, did you, did she finally wash it? <laughs> your New Orleans Saint one? Oh, I can do cupcakes? Well, then I'll have to take a picture of myself in my cupcakes for sure. Because I got my cupcakes. I don't have any way to prop that. There we go. I don't know what we're looking at. Oh, we're looking at you face by putting on your sunglasses. 
Saints thing. Ooh, this goes around. I forgot that. Question is, how big do you want your Well, to I just want a mouthful, right? I mean, do we or do what did they say? They don't say. They said cubit like stew meat. Yeah, so and my stew meat, I like mine a little small, you know? Like when I do stew, no, I don't do stew so much, but I do soup, you know? Mm -hmm. so, ah, getting to be soup time of the year. I know, I, I know. We're gonna be making a lot of different kinds of soups. I can't wait. I'll have to teach you how to make the broth in the Instant Pot and everything. That looks like a nice size, doesn't it? Yes, what size is it gonna be? I don't care what it looks like. <laughs> I don't like it. Can you cut it again in half? Sure, let's <laughs> put it all back together and start over. <laughs> yeah. Because what's the point, right? Mm -hmm. Have we made the dessert yet? No. Okay, the lemon ice box pie has not been made yet, or we oh, we're doing spice cake. Oh, that's right, spice cake. Are they making it this afternoon? Then yeah. is that what it is? Yeah, okay. Get back in the doctor's office. Okay. I forgot we were doing lemon ice box pie, and then Rachel said no. Rachel said spice cake. I made the best chocolate cake cherry thing this week. Okay, what I did was I took a chocolate cake mix, milk chocolate, by the way. And then I added some cherry juice out of the maraschino cherry jar. And I had about four cherries left. I just chopped them up and put them all through there. And I baked it like, you know, according to the recipe on the, on the you know, the cake mix box. And then when it came out and cooled, I took the pitchfork and poked holes all through it. And then I had some black cherry jello. So I did the black cherry jello, one package and one cup of hot water. Oh my God, it was so good. Then I took, now this is something that I kind of cheated on. You know, I have all those cream cheese frostings from the Jimmy the Baker cinnamon rolls. Mm -hmm. So I took two packets of that and added and put it in the mixer and whipped it up and added about a um, oh, quarter of a cup of cherry juice. And then put it on top of the cake and then put it in the refrigerator. And it is, oh, it's so I good. I found a recipe for a carrot spice cake. Oh. And I learned a trick. What? When you're making the, uh, the rectangular mm -hmm. uh, tiered cakes, Yeah. what you want to do, you don't want to make a regular cake like what I was doing. I was doing a regular sheet cake and then using dental floss to cut it in half. Right. Use a half sheet pan. Make it big and thin and then you just cut it in three sections and oh. put them on top of each other. You know I have half sheet pans. I do too. Everybody does, I think. All right. Okay. So now we're going to what? Well, it says here we're gonna we're gonna. What other ingredients do we need? We're what done. Other ingredients. We've prepared? done. We've done the diced carrots, diced celery. We need a three quarter cup of wine that we haven't pulled out yet. Everything else is done. Okay, so gonna we're gonna, gonna put my... where are you gonna put your crock pot? Slow cooker, cause that's where it determines where we get started. I think I'm gonna put it on the stove. That's not smart, but okay. Why isn't it smart? Well, I mean, you know, somebody could come by and turn on the eye by accident. I mean, I don't know who would, but you know. No, the question is who wouldn't? <laughs> Yeah. So you know the bottom of my induction cooktop is yeah. Knocked it out. That's the reason I said, and you're gonna put the slow cooker on the oven. Oh, I mean on the stove. Okay. All righty. All righty then. If you insist, but I'm not sure that's a good idea. Well, but it's got the vent. After I finish the the, the sauteing and all, then you'll take it off. it off. Okay. Okay. That that makes sense then. Okay. So I'm gonna start. You don't need the rack. So I'm going to take it out for you. I'm not going to pick it up and carry it for you. I don't don't love you that much. Oh, well. Oh, and you got coffee. That's not fair. You want some? No, you don't have any good coffee. Oh, I got my coffee creamer. Duh. Okay, I'll get some in a minute. 
I'll get some in a minute. Let's let's do this and I'll have a cup in a minute. I forgot I went to the grocery store and bought coffee creamer. Okay. So if you're gonna plug it up, don't you if you're gonna move it over there, wouldn't you plug it well, up over I'm there? Move it over here. Okay, now you changed your mind again. All right. Would you want coffee or not? I know, I'm just joking. Yeah, that's what I'm using to say. You want you told me the other way, so now I'm gonna come over here and sh shoot it. Okay. We need one take one teaspoon of olive oil. And then we start heating that up. So you're just eyeballing it. Okay. Gotcha. That's a teaspoon. Okay, have you turned the saute on yet? Not yet. Okay. And then the meat goes in first, and then so we're gonna need something to put the meat in when it comes out. So I guess I I'll get a bowl. Ground saute start. So we need to get a bowl to put the meat in whenever we pull yeah. it out. And then the vegetables can go in with the meat, right? So we just need a bowl big enough to put it all in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's not going to be big enough. Mm-mm. Last reason I said we need a bowl. <laughs> Just saying. Looks like we're going to have to go in the cabinet and get a bowl. A biggie bowl. Which one? Well, you got a cup of mushroom. I mean, you got eight ounces of mushroom, a little over a cup of celery. Oh, and that's going to cook down, though, when you saw So, that. I'm thinking probably about a middle-sized one. There you go. I wouldn't do the large one. I mean, it's not necessary. What did I do with the strainer? It's right here. Do you want it? Yeah. One thing I like about this is the fact that um, you can see it. You didn't season, we didn't season the meat first? It said salt and pepper afterwards. I did not say any. It didn't say anything about seasoning meat. I don't know why, but it said after you... know you, what? It don't say anything about... Uh-uh. Salt and pepper after you're totally cooked. It don't say anything about taking the vegetables out after you... But it does it. say because we're supposed to be doing it and on a different pan. pan. To put it back in here. Right. So but since I'm doing it in here... You're I'll not going to be able... I'll do the vegetables. I'll deglaze the pan with the vegetables okay, in Okay, you think you can? And then okay. add the meat back to it. All right, then whatever you want to do. But we do need a wooden spoon to do that so that you don't ruin your bottom of your... Slow cooker or a spurtle, whichever one you want to use. You know, I'm a Kevin Belton fan. We use wood stuff. Well, spurtles are wood too. I'm just saying, whichever one you want to use. Y'all don't have many wooden spurtles. I think I have one, but I don't see where I don't see it at the moment. Why in the world don't y'all have wooden? I know I bought you some. This used to be straight across the end. I can swear I bought you some. There it is, right there. I don't know. We'll I mean, it don't matter. I'm just saying. Is it getting? It's warming up. Okay. Oh, there was a slight trick I saw on all recipes. Yeah. Um, if you don't know if your oil is ready uh -huh. when you're frying or anything like that, yeah. you sit it on the stove, of course, get it hot, and you get a wooden spoon yeah. that has the round handle. Okay. And you put it down in the oil, and if bubble goes around the the spoon, really? it's ready to go. Isn't that funny? Yeah. You know this wasn't ready because we ain't sizzling. Uh -huh. We ain't sizzling. Ow. I'm that sorry. And that was my foot in the way. Okay, so we're going to come back to you after we have sauteed the meat. Yeah. Okay, now you can see how it's sauteing in here. And it's looking really good. And um, we've started, it's been about, ooh, let's see, it was, it's been about five minutes. That's not bad, five minutes. It took about five minutes to get it like this, and we've got a little bit more that we're going to saute it. I want all the pink gone. Because we want all, all the pink gone. Although we are going to cook it in the slow cooker, and so it, you know, it's not, yeah, it'll, it'll, finish it'll still cooking. finish cooking, but yeah. It's making that lovely brown kind of juice. It's not really a, a water water, you know what I mean? It's a brown. We're already mm -hmm. kind of making like a little gravy there. And there's no cornstarch, flour, or anything. It's just it's olive oil olive and meat. Oil and, and the meat. There's so much water injected in, the, yeah. in our meat these days. I know. It's just really sad. You go to the store, you buy a pound of meat, you get a half pound of water and a half pound of meat. Yeah. 
So we're gonna take the meat out and put it in the bowl and then we're gonna put the vegetables in and we will come back and show you that. Okay, we are taking the brown meat, out. well, I'm not, it's like the royal we here. Uh, my brother is taking, <laughs> Charlie's taking the meat out. Mm. That's a lot of water left in that pan. I'm just impressed you're using that wooden spatula thing to do it. Well, I don't have much other choice. Though. And you know what we didn't do? What? Well, we didn't bring the celery and carrots over here. So no, you, of course not. That so, would have made it easy. <laughs> it's like you're going to have to walk over there and get them because I had the camera. Just the celery and carrots? And the mushrooms. The mushrooms at the same time? Um, you know what? The book is over there too. Let me go check. I know the celery and carrots go. Let me go check on the book. Um, it says here, yeah, cook the carrot, no, cook the carrots and celery for five to eight minutes until it's softened, then deglaze it. When do you put the, oh, wow. You don't put the mushrooms in until you're ready to cook it in the slow cooker. Yeah. So now, I mean, let me go ahead and get this over there. Okay, we're going to do the next five ingredients. Okay, we have the marinara sauce, the mushrooms. Don't do that yet. That's not going to be till we can totally get finished cooking. That doesn't go until after you have cooked it in the slow cooker. Still got to be open. Well, why are you going to open it so soon? We got six hours before. Huh? That's not going to go in until we're finished cooking in the slow cooker. Oh. Like we said, fighting in the kitchen. Um. Then we need the marinara sauce, the mushrooms, the red pepper, the bay leaf. What am I forgetting? Because there's, oh, and the beef broth. Okay, we're going to deglaze with this. Then we're going to add the marinara sauce, the mushrooms, the beef broth, the bay leaf. One bay leaf. You can go ahead and take oh, it out. That's, I was talking about pepper. And red pepper flakes. Oh, that was black pepper. And it says half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. So it is optional, but I thought we'd try the... We won't do half a teaspoon. No, we we'll just put a, a little bit. So that's that's we'll what we're going to do next. Okay, let's go look half. at the... Let's go see how the celeries and carrots are doing. Ooh. Yeah. It said five to eight minutes. So we will come back in about five to eight minutes. Okay, we were we were just, we thought we'd pop back in here and tell you there's two different ways of doing this. Number one, I came up with the idea of putting this in the pressure cooker or instant pot. And since you're sauteing your vegetables and your meat, um, you might need to put the mushrooms in there and kind of saute them down a little bit. But you just add all this in there and man, cook this in about 15 minutes and on pressure cooker about the same time that you're, getting your pasta done and you got dinner on the table in no time flat. And then Charlie's got another idea about putting it in the slow cooker for a mother who has to get kids off to school or whatever. So go take it away. Well, you just, you prep your vegetables and meat. You cut everything up at the, the night before. And then when you get up in the morning, you're getting the kids off ready to go to school. You can do your sauteing, get through your sauteing, your meat and your vegetables, put it all back in the pot and put it on slow cooker. Get the kids on the bus and go to work. Yeah. And then it's ready when you get home. Ready when you get home. Yeah. Ready when you get home. And then all you have to do is cook your pasta, which we will have to do tonight. So, yeah, that's an that's a good idea. So, the, the carrots and celery look about done. Yeah, the carrots are getting soft. Yeah, they look really, really good. Yeah, I think it was worth it. We couldn't, we didn't have any good celery at the store, so we actually splurged and got the celery's already cut. You know, so what are they, the celery hearts or whatever, or the, I don't know what they're called, but anyway, we, that's what we got. Now he's deglazing with uh, three quarter cups of the red wine and it doesn't matter what kind of red wine, but I will tell you this, don't go buy cooking red wine. Do something, you know, all the chefs tell you, make sure it's something you would drink. And this is our good wine that we bought for New Year's. So we're big, heavy wine drinkers around here. I'll tell you that because we still got it from last new year so it might even be ready for this new year so you know whatever well some of us have gotten diabetes since then and can't drink wine yeah <laughs> and then um yeah so this is supposed to be also for a diabetic diet that's the main thing now the one thing that we 
didn't necessarily do, I don't think we have the sodium free. The low sodium. The low sodium beef broth. Beef broth. I will say that. But we made our own, so it's it's not quite, You, I mean, it's a teaspoon and a half, but you know, it won't be too bad. And we're not adding any salt to this while it's cooking. So there's no, it's everything, it, it's all done later. So, God, that look, oh my gosh, that looks good. Leave the lid off, the yeah, that looks good. Okay, are we about ready to put everything back together? Just about. All right, so we're gonna put in the meat first, and then I've got to tell you as we go. So we're putting our meat back in first. I said, get all your drippings in there. Yeah, and stir that up good. Flavor. Yeah. And then we're going to add the marinara sauce, which actually it is marinara sauce, but that's kind of, you could do any kind of. I thought she was gonna make me use the, the, yeah. the other stuff. Any kind of sauce like that, you could, they have them we're gonna with have to basil. Buy this. We're gonna have to buy some more of this because that's what we use on our pizza. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. I was surprised that it is marinara sauce because you can use tomato basil, any of that. And we're fine with the Kroger brand. You don't have to spend a lot of money. I mean, I love the Kroger brand, so. Well, we had some traditional yeah. flavored with meat. Don't do that though, on this one, I don't think. I think well, you could do the tomato basil or one of the other ones or whatever. That's what she was gonna have me use, but mm. I said, well, the recipe called me right now. And so I guess she relented, gave me my way. Well, I can. we can definitely get some more of that. I might even have some over at my house, so. But I like the Kroger marinara sauce better than anybody else's. Yeah. I've kind of gotten uh, attached to Kroger brand stuff, you know? I like their frozen vegetables. I like a lot of their stuff. So. You see, I used to work in a restaurant. Yeah. And we had a marinara sauce. And I just cannot find anybody that makes it like the stuff we had. Yeah. But this Kroger stuff is as close as I find. And we've been eating at a particular pizza joint for decades. Pizza Hut. I wasn't on the Not sponsored. Name. Not sponsored. That's all you have but, to say. Uh, not sponsored. But it is Pizza Hut. That's our favorite. And they changed their sauce. It's and not that, the yeah, same as it was yeah. when we were in high school. Yeah. So now it's, we make our own pizza most of the time. Every once in a while, I, I want a good deep dish pan pizza. So therefore, I order it from Pizza Hut. But mostly, we make our own pizzas now. Okay, we're doing the mushrooms. You got it. So a whole thing of mushrooms. Eight ounces. Pack. Eight ounce pack, sliced already. We decided to use white. You could use baby Bella's. It doesn't matter. That's up to you. We went with cheap. It was a dollar ninety nine. So you know. All right. Then the broth. Cup and a half of broth. Okay. One bay leaf. One bay leaf. And it does say half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes, which is optional, but we're just going to put just a little bit. I just got a phone call. You did? Yeah, and it's the one place I forgot about. My storage unit. I gotta oops, call them, I got a new credit card, so I gotta call them. Oops. Expiration date, I'll call them in just a minute. And I know it's just something that I overlooked because I kept thinking, is that on the credit card or is that on the bank account? What else? All right, we're ready. Is that it? That is it. That's all the ingredients. That is all the ingredients. We're ready to rock and roll. And now, now the recipe said 11, so low. six to eight for low, but we're gonna put it uh, on four, uh, four, yeah. four to six for high. Yeah, but we like to do ours a little mix up. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna put it on high for one hour or for two hours. It's 11 o'clock now, so what do you wanna do? Slow cook, high, uh, probably till it's 11, yeah. Sometime between one and two o'clock, I'll put it on low. Yeah, so probably around two hours and then we put it on low. That's the way we like to do it. We like to give it a head start. We really like that it works. So we will see you back this evening when we're ready to put it all together and make the pasta. Bye now.